everyone and welcome back to another episode of Mid Synapse podcast series. I'm Hetvisha, your host. And today we are diving into a topic that is currently creating a buzz and is at the forefront of both public health and clinical practice. COVID-19 vaccination and cardiovascular health. The pandemic has posed numerous challenges and one of the critical area of concern has been its impact on heart health. And to help us unpack this complex topic we have we are thrilled to have Dr. Lavanya Nara with us. Dr. Lavanya is a distinguished cardiologist at Kims Hospital in India. Renowned for her expertise in cardiovascular health and patient care. With a robust background and in clinical practice and academic research Dr. Lavanya has dedicated her career to advancing the treatment of heart diseases and improving patient outcomes. So welcome Dr. Nara and thank you for joining us today. Hi Hetri, very happy to be here uh, uh, on your podcast. Uh, it's a new experience for uh, me as well and I look forward to talk to you about the latest uh, details on the COVID-19 vaccine and its implications on the cardiovascular health. Thank you doctor. Likewise. And now to kick things off, um can you explain the potential impact of COVID-19 infection on cardiovascular health especially for patients uh, with pre-existing heart conditions? Uh sure. I I think I'll begin uh, by speaking a little on how exactly this COVID infection occurs and how it uh, affects uh, a person. Uh, so we all know that this covid-19 is caused by the sars-cov-2 virus and this has had a huge global impact since the world health organization declared it as a pandemic on march 11 2020 so why this uh, covid virus or uh, coronavirus it is called coronavirus but because when you look in to the virus under an electron microscope you see small spike like projections which actually look like a crown and that's why this virus got its name as the coronavirus So how exactly does this virus transmit is it can occur from direct person to person contact or from an infected individual when he sneezes or coughs those droplets can get released into the air and you can get infected these symptoms usually become visible within days and they can include fever dry cough dry cough and shortness of breath how exactly this virus acts once the virus enters the human body it kicks up an inflammatory response in the form of a cytokine storm So what exactly is inflammation? Inflammation happens when your immune system of your body responds to something which is within the body or something which is external like your viral infections. So the covid virus can affect not only your lungs but also your heart, your blood vessels as well as other parts of the body. It uh, affects the body by attaching to a specific protein which we call the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 and that is found on the surface of the cells in our body. So what this virus makes is it makes our blood sticky. So it blocks or clogs up your blood vessels, both small and big, and it can cause heart attacks, stroke. It can cause myocarditis, that is inflammation of the heart. It can cause heart failure. It can cause irregular heart beating, or it can cause blood clots, both in the lungs as well as the legs. All these can be quite fatal. So people who have hypertension, diabetes, those who are obese, those who are having lung problems. or who have pre-existing heart problems like coronary heart disease who have undergone stents or who have undergone a bypass surgery or who have valve issues they are at a higher risk of developing these complications so these people have two to three times the risk than compared to a normal person of developing covid symptoms and being hospitalized or dying from the infection Uh, so there have been concerns raised about the potential risk of myocarditis and pericarditis following covid-19 vaccinations uh, and especially particularly among young individuals so could you shed some light on these uh, concerns and discuss uh, the uh, latest findings with us yeah sure so myocarditis is actually the inflammation of the heart muscle the heart has endocardium myocardium and pericardium right so the inflammation of the heart muscle is something which was much talked about after the covid vaccinations so in myopericarditis there's usually chest pain there's increased level of cardiac enzymes and there are some ecg changes so the question to be asked is does this happen only with covid vaccine or it can happen with any or all of the vaccines so normally when you take a vaccine you have just general side effects there can be pain when you take the injection and you can have some mild fever and 
body aches and the risk of serious side effects for any vaccine per se is extremely low so what happened was when all this discussion started the world health organization actually checked whether this myocarditis can happen with other vaccines as well and they found that this was this also happened with small pack uh, smallpox vaccines anthrax vaccine as well as the influenza vaccine but the good thing is whatever myocarditis comes out of these vaccines it is very short lived it is of short duration and the recovery is extremely great so comparatively when you get a covid infection the risk of myocarditis if 1 lakh people have covid in that 1000 to 4000 people can get myocarditis on the same hand if you take the covid vaccine that is a mri vaccine in particular just 0.3 to 5 people out of the 1 lakh vaccinated people may develop myocarditis and their survival is 99% so we should remember that this is a short lived side effect and the recovery is excellent and that should not deter anybody from receiving the vaccine yes that is great numbers i think and also as you mentioned that sometimes social media does create harm to us yeah definitely I agree uh now let's talk about the mrna vaccine specifically Uh, how do mrna vaccine affect the cardiovascular health if at all it does and are there any specific consideration for patients with cardiovascular diseases when choosing between different vaccine types yes yeah, so uh, let me talk about the vaccines a little bit uh, when the covid pandemic started there were multiple vaccines which were rolled out okay some are called the mrna vaccines that is a live uh, vaccine which was the moderna and the pfizer vaccines there were also the adenoviral vector vaccines that is the johnson and johnson and the astrazeneca vaccines and there were inactivated vaccines like the sputnik what happened in india was there were two vaccines rolled out simultaneously one was the covishield which is actually the astrazeneca vaccine that is an adenoviral vector vaccine and the other one was the covaxin which was developed by uh, bharat biotech and that was an inactivated virus later on sputnik 5 was uh, rolled out that is also an inactivated uh, vaccine so what uh, was the initial regime initially we thought that a two dose vaccine regime is sufficient and uh, it was proven by various trials saying that this is enough for a primary infection prevention of covid later on because of the imminent threat of the omicron variant the third as well as the fourth booster also came into effect so what happened was more than 90% of these post covid 19 vaccination myocarditis we'll talk about it later but this myocarditis was found in these mrna vaccines that is the modern and modern and the pfizer vaccines which were actually given in the developed world that is in the western countries the indian vaccines were more of astrazeneca which is uh, an inactivated and, and an adenoviral vector vaccine so myocarditis was reported that to in these mrna vaccine receivers more in men more in young population that is between 16 to 39 years of age and also with the second dose why this happened is because men received more vaccines than women and also the young received more vaccines than the very uh, young and the very old so that is the reason the reactions were seen more in this population so more the number so more the reaction that was how it happened yeah and uh, i think that is the basis of what happened in the vaccinations there was myocarditis but the number was really less and that happened with mrna vaccines which was not given in our country at that point of time okay okay i appreciate a thorough explanation on this and now speaking of patient concerns a uh, lot of patients are uh, hesitant to receive the covid-19 vaccine due to fears of exacerbating existing cardiovascular conditions or any other potential adverse effects so what would you say to patients who would, uh, who express such concerns yeah i think i'll uh, talk to you about why do we in the first place you know vaccine is something taken to prevent a disease in a healthy person so that he doesn't get that disease in the future so what happens when you are a healthy person and you want to take a vaccine you are naturally concerned about the side effects because you don't have the disease at that point of time per se so naturally you start thinking that will these side effects affect me in any way and also there is a lot of insufficient and wrong information on the internet and thanks to social media that has become much more rampant in the current uh, scenario 
And also, since COVID was something new and the vaccine was newly developed, a lot of people had queries. This vaccine wasn't tested before. So will it actually work? And will it be worse than the infections? So with all these doubts, so people were really hesitant to take these vaccines. And there's another whole group of people called the anti-vaxxers. They don't just believe that the vaccine is uh, you know, not working. They think it is harmful and it is usually a government or a pharma propaganda to just promote it just for the you know, uh, financial gain part of it. But I think we should just remember that these COVID vaccines literally saved over 20 million lives. And this is just in the first year of their implementation. So they reduce the risk of the infection, the hospitalization, as well as death. We know that these side effects, mainly myocarditis, is a known side effect, but the incidence is extremely low compared to that myocarditis which you get when you actually have a COVID infection. So that is not your reason not to take the vaccine because your risk of not taking the vaccine is much greater if you actually develop the infection. And I think the reports are more biased because these studies were done in the Western world, more in the US, where actually more of mRNA vaccines were available and used. There are case reports that even non-MRI vaccines can cause myocarditis, but again, the incidence of that is very low and that should not hamper anyone from getting a vaccine, I think. Yes, that is truly said. I think the proportion also matters, the proportion of uh, the exactly yes very low compared and exactly. like we said that uh, internet causes a buzz even yeah more. because I, I think we should consult the real doctor than going with Dr. Google and uh, I think that should be the first thing consult your healthcare practitioner before you read up you might read up a lot of things on the internet or on the social media but uh, you know we are here sitting trained for so many years to help you out in your time of need and I think that is where you should get your information from Yes, absolutely. I think some people should listen to this uh, conversation. Now, um, another question that has emerged is why are we seeing cardiovascular effects now after two years uh, majority, uh, in majority of the population who have received uh, COVID-19 vaccination and what factors might contribute to this delayed onset of cardiovascular related issues? Uh, right. So why we are seeing after two years or maybe after three years of the COVID happened is we did see a lot of cases even during the initial vaccine phase or when the COVID actually happened. But then the pandemic was in such a swing that there was more concern about the lives being lost and the hospitalization. And so now the data is coming out because we have the time to compile it and know that what reaction is happening and what exactly happened after the infection and what exactly happened after the vaccination. But also to say our immune system is such that when you introduce something from the outside, let it be a virus like your infection, so naturally your immune system gets changed or it develops within time. It creates something called antibodies. So these antibodies fight against any infection and that can be in a good way or in a bad way. So I think these, some of these reactions are the ones whose uh, immune response is a little more stronger than the others and they are developing uh, side effects or adverse effects as you call them. But again, they are very minimal and they are more in, uh, I would say they are more in the wake of the COVID infection rather than the vaccine induced thing. So I think people are confusing the infection. It's called a long COVID syndrome. So whatever, whoever has been infected with COVID or who had COVID two to three years ago are still having some symptoms, mild symptoms of long COVID where they're still breathless and they're not feeling themselves. It is the side effect of the COVID infection per se rather than being of the vaccine. And I think those two things should not be confused at all. Yes, thank you for clearing that myth for me as well. So now uh, looking to the future, how do you foresee the role of COVID-19 vaccination evolving in the context of cardiovascular health, especially considering the emergence of new variants of the virus? Uh, so we know like any other flu virus, even COVID uh, is a virus and it keeps changing with time, with season, with time. So there are not going to be new uh, variants and whatever vaccines we have taken, their effectiveness and protectiveness automatically comes down with time. So what we can do is the updated COVID vaccines are going to come up. Like how we have a flu vaccine with new strains incorporated into it every year. You're going to get updated COVID-19 vaccines. 
And just a month ago, on June 27th, the CDC, that is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, it actually said that everyone over the age of five years will have to receive the updated COVID-19 vaccine. This has already been approved by the FDA. I think it's it's going to take a while uh, since it comes to our country. But it says that whoever is five years and above should go for the booster shot. And those with lower immunity might need even maybe one or two uh, extra shots. So I think that is a way this is going to stay with us. This is going to be like an endemic disease where it's always going to be there and you need to take a booster shot every year to pick up your immunity. So like there was the, in middle, there was like booster doses are not really suitable or you should not take because you're already you immunized, immunized. So is it safe to take booster doses? Yeah, definitely. Because like I said, the strains keep changing with season. It is like your common cold and flu. You know, every year you, you don't get a cold once and then stop. You keep getting cold once a year or maybe twice a year when the season changes, when the weather changes. So this virus is the same. It keeps mutating. It's going to be there in the environment for a while. So as it is, the protection of any vaccine lasts for maybe six months to one year, depending on what kind of a vaccine it is. And since we have already taken boosters long while ago, the immunity, whatever protection it offers, is already fading away. And to actually back up this protection and prevent against serious disease, it is better to take boosters. And now we have even genetic studies to prove that this is the effect of the COVID vaccines, which is keeping protected, uh, which is actually protecting us from further infection and worse COVID symptoms. So yeah, definitely, if, when the, if and when the vaccine gets updated, I think you should all go for a booster. And again, in consultation with your primary physician, because you, you each patient is different, each person is different, what problems you have and how it is addressed is different with different uh, patient. So definitely you have to meet your healthcare professional and then get go and get your booster shot. Thank you for that explanation. And it is also exciting to hear about the ongoing evolution. So now before we wrap up, uh, I'd like to ask one question outside of our main topic. Uh, so with your extensive background, what advice would you give to medical students and young healthcare professionals who are aspiring to specialize in cardiology? Uh, I think uh, since we are speaking on COVID and this pandemic, I, I think we should remember what a pandemic has done to the world or the country in particular. There was the combined efforts of all the healthcare professionals. I, I think people actually realize the value of how important healthcare professionals are, are during this pandemic. Because the importance was much, much more than any other time. I think the young generation saw what a devastating experience it was, but there was not a single doctor sitting at home and twiddling his thumbs. Everyone was out there. We were all with the patients, even when we knew that it was transmissible. I think this is kind of inspiring for the next generation to know that what you as a doctor can do to your patients and not just to your patients, your society and to your country. So I think uh, cardiology per se, uh, we, we've also seen a lot of heart attacks during that time, a lot of uh, blood clots in the heart or in the legs going into the lungs. And we had a lot of heart attacks with the, you know, where we were forced to give some injections or do procedures taking all the risks. So this is something which comes only from passion and I think the younger generation should be, uh, you know, take inspiration from this whole pandemic that uh, this is a good, uh, you know, part to take. I know there are a lot of sacrifices involved, but uh, this is a good part to take for the younger generation who are really passionate about helping people. Thank you for that valuable advice and it was very inspiring. And now as we conclude the session, I would like to thank Dr. Nara for sharing your expertise and insights with us today and your knowledge and experience have provided us with a deeper understanding of the complex relationship between COVID-19 vaccination and cardiovascular health. Yeah, thank you so much, Kethi. It was nice being here and speaking to you as well. Thank you. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us. And remember, if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions, don't hesitate to join us on MedSynapse platform. MedSynapse platform is, just not, it is not just a resource. It's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers, participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare. So until next time, stay safe and stay updated.